toxic masculinity, rising suicide rates among men and boys, males depressed, and the cold chaos, as Robert Moore calls it. This is the state. This is the state of the masculine. The state of men on the planet right now. In this video, I'll be talking about my experience here at Grounding Man and how it relates to the masculine archetypes, the grounding and reharnessing of masculine energy, and also how breathwork, bioenergetics, and deep embodiment and owning of the experience of what it is to be a man is crucial to stop seeing the violence and the suicide and the depression and the perversion of the shadow of manhood and masculinity on the planet. So first I wanna talk about toxic masculinity. There's a lot of this going around right now. First off, shout out to Elliot Hulse. Love you, brother. I'm, I'm here at the end of Grounding Man, this epic experience. If you're tuning in right now and watching, I'd love to know where you're coming from and let me know where you're watching from. Get involved in the conversation. Shout out to Elliot Hulse. Shout out to Robert Moore, the amazing sage and powerful keeper of male wisdom. He wrote King, Warrior, Magician, Lover. He also wrote The Archetype of Initiation. These are very powerful works that I recommend to any man who is trying to understand the life cycle of manhood and the life cycle of masculinity. There's a lot going around in the media though right now and in the world about toxic masculinity and about the Me Too movement and how you know this male-dominated patriarchy is so fucked up and the masculinity is toxic. And I wanna to speak to that for a moment. Not only has it been really present for me this year as I'm stepping into new levels of my understanding, embodiment, and experience, but masculinity is not toxic. Masculinity is not dead. Masculinity is a principle, and it's a deep, pure, powerful principle. Father in heaven, sky father, God the father, the cosmic father, the sun, the physical manifestation of this. There's nothing toxic about it. It's a pure energy and it's needed for the life force in your life and the planet. The idea of the good king, the wise king, in balance with the feminine, keeping his being over the realm. So to be clear, masculinity is not toxic. There are men, male-bodied people on earth and have been on earth that have embodied a toxic expression of it. A toxic expression is an expression that doesn't incorporate all of its aspects, doesn't acknowledge the shadow, and is unconsciously acting out unresolved trauma, repressed trauma, repressed emotion, negative thought patterns. That is the toxic male and the toxic man in the world. And we're holding much space for the healing of this. The holding of this, I love as, as Elliot was riffing about. Healing means it's broken. To come into wholeness or integrity means drawing in all the aspects, healthy sexuality, healthy leadership, healthy authority, healthy physicality. All these things can be expressed in a positive way. And this is what I believe is the divine masculinity or the raising of masculinity, but also the grounding, coming back down into the earth, back down into the human experience. The human experience, not getting lost in ideology. Ideology has caused a lot of suffering. Not getting lost in hierarchy, not getting lost in concepts or spiritual ideas that disembody you and cause spiritual bypassing. So that, that's toxic masculinity. As far as the suicide rate, this is because men have not been given the rites of passage, the archetype of initiation. Being initiated into manhood, initiated into the tribe, initiated into the culture in which we grow up. The initiations available in Western culture are not sufficient. This is why the shootings are happening. This is why the violence is happening. This is why suicide and depression are on the rise, are at an all-time high since we've been measuring it. It's because these boys do not have wise elders. They do not have men ahead of them using their heart, but also channeling aggression and physicality to show them what it's for. This is something all ancient people understood, especially the Native Americans. 
especially the Vedic civilization, especially Greek civilization. They understood the need for this. Without these rites of passage, without rituals and brotherhood and male leaders with young males, guess what? When the aggression comes online, when testosterone comes online, when the sexual urge comes online, when the media is a lot of violence and disassociation and mixed messages about how to treat women, how to treat your parents, how to treat your peers, this is why the violence and the suicide and the depression and the addiction is reaching large levels, catastrophic levels that are causing us to pay attention. We have to pay attention. The solution is not more imprisonment. The solution is not more medication, pharmaceuticals. You're clipping at the flowers, at the leaves. I'm talking to the institutions, not to any person. You're just clipping at the, the toxic expressions. We have to go to the root. We have to go to the root of this, and that is the male psyche has not been guided. It's not been well guided. We have to recall this. We have to remember and reassemble the masculine rites of passage. And that's what we've been doing here. Calling in the four archetypes. The archetype of the king, of a leader, of a commander, a benevolent lord, and a benevolent masculine keeper of the realm. Who ideally rules with a feminine, rules with a queen. The warrior, the doing going out into the world with the sword and acting, but the sword of honor, compassion, brotherhood, accountability, integrity, not dominance and taking of life for ideological or egoic reasons. The magician, the shaman, the medicine man, the intuitive guidance system, the emotional guidance system from our inside, living inside out. There are not healthy expressions of this. And then finally, the lover, the archetype of the lover, the sensual, powerful man that is able to drop into his feelings and meet his lover, meet the children, meet elders with tenderness, not losing any of his masculine power, actually gaining more power because he has a balanced expression. And so I want to tell you that there are men in the world doing the work. I am recommitting more of my life, my study, my experience, my coaching, my event production to facilitating this, to facilitating brotherhood for men, to facilitating embodied, embodied, not mental only, but embodied experience through breath, <sighs> through radical conversations about sexuality, through radical conversations about what it means to be a man, what the midlife crisis means, what becoming a man as a teenager means, what schooling means and education, and how we can implement this in Western society, here in America, in the United States. The whole world is looking. We must be leaders, we must be role models. Because if, if, we, don't, if we don't do this, my sons, your sons, the future men, the future generations, we're leaving them a wasteland. We're leaving them a wasteland. We must walk as if the seven generations that come after us, our actions are rippling unto them. And we must protect them. We got to safeguard them. They will be ruling the future. Wise men plant seeds of trees from which they will never enjoy the shade. This is true wisdom. This is true compassion and how you actually build a healthy civilization with healthy masculine energy. The world's craving it, craving it. And salute to all the brothers and all the sisters that support the brothers out there doing the work. If you're vibing with this, like, share, and comment on this video. Tag someone who needs to hear this message. I love you all so much. Tuning in live. Grounding Man, Elliot Hulse, New York. Mahalo, mahalo, mahalo. My heart goes out to you.